Hey folks, it's David with Streaming Relativity, home of the Astro DNA Observatory. So we did it! We managed to run two sequences with the 12-inch Newtonian on the only clear night that we've had in weeks. Now the focus of these sequences was really not about the imaging, although I have to tell you I do love the images that I captured, but it was really more about how well this big, heavy restored 12-inch Newtonian would play with my mount, the CEM120, and my observatory, the, the Explorer Dome. And as usual, I learned a lot, a lot about this rig, and I want to share with others pros and cons of a large Newtonian astrograph. I'll start with the cons, because I know it's very easy to overlook the truth about a rig when you are experiencing aperture fever. And trust me, there are some real issues. It is a big telescope, and big means bulky and heavy. This thing weighs in at around 60, 65 pounds once it's outfitted with an image train and balanced on the mount. It's really not practical for nightly setup and teardown, at least not for me. This deserves a permanent installation in a dome or a roll-off roof observatory. And uh, given my pure design, it barely fits in my 8-foot Explorer dome. Second con. You need a very high capacity mount, and that means a high price tag. I'm using a CEM120, which is rated for about 115 pounds of instrumentation, um, and perhaps it's the most affordable mount in this weight class, but even with its 115 pound capacity, the mount feels like it's being pushed to its limits if the OTA is not perfectly balanced. And this is more than just a weight issue. It's an issue of the moment arm that's created by the distribution of the balancing forces along the OTA. Even with perfect balance, the OTA, uh, the, the length of the OTA and the position of these counterbalancing weights that you have in it and forces, well, that's going to create leverage, which the mount must counteract. And so if you've got wind or other forces, they can cause disturbances that actually activate this leverage and the mount needs to be strong enough or uh, you know sturdy enough to be able to counteract those forces. Um, for more information on this, you can actually go check out at Astrophysics. They post a very interesting graph that shows the impact of the size of an OTA on the capacity of their mount. So it's really a function of the physics of your of your uh, of your rig okay fourth issue with the Newtonian design is that it uses parabolic primary mirrors and a flat elliptical secondary and uh, obviously the primary gathers the light uh, redirects it down at the secondary secondary shoots it back up into your um, into your focuser tube where eventually it's going to land on your sensor or your eyepiece. Now this is a really efficient design, it's very cost effective but it does present some optical challenges. Coma in particular is a challenge. It's the primary issue in fact um, with Newtonian uh, telescope designs and it causes image distortions as you move towards the edge edge of the field of view and uh, what do I mean by coma well you know if you look at the edge of the field in this image you'll see that the stars they look like comets or birds uh, and that's because this is an uncorrected frame um, and this uh, coma this distortion is a it gets worse with the faster the telescope is in this case this is an f4 so coma correctors are truly needed for imaging with one of these fast Newtonians, but they can be expensive. In fact, some coma correctors can cost more than the telescope itself, so be warned. Now, given uh, fifth con, given we know that there are issues with the optical design of a Newtonian, this makes collimation essential. Like, without it, everything is going to be ex uh, exacerbated, and you're really, you might even have. Uh, distorted stars at the center of your field. So collimation needs to take place um, as soon as you deploy your scope to your uh, to your mount, to your pier, and allow it some time to settle in, including temperature. Uh, any movement of the scope uh, off the off the mount, uh, I can assure you, you're going to lose some collimation and you're going to need to redo it. And this is another reason why a permanent install is really best for this size uh, Newtonian. Uh, now, I covered collimation of the, this Newtonian in one of my earlier videos. I'll make sure to leave you a link on how that is done. Now, uh, 
the sixth con really applies to any any instrument that has large optics, large mirrors in particular, it's thermal management. Um, and it's, so it's not just for the Newtonian reflector. You need to allow enough time for the optics to cool and reach ambient temperature. Uh, you can use fans to accelerate that time and uh, maintain the temp over your sessions. Why is this important? Well, if the mirror is warmer than the ambient temperature, you'll actually get plumes, you know, heat plumes that will distort uh, your your images. So this is a real issue for this very, very large mirror. It takes time to cool. So the last con that I would say uh, is an optional con, uh, which is uh, diffraction spikes that are caused by secondary that secondary mirror spider assembly. A lot of people dislike these uh, diffraction spikes. Uh, I happen to love them, and they uh, they they happen on the brightest stars in your image. Typically, not all of them, but all the bright ones, you'll certainly see them. And for some, they don't want this. For me, I love them, so this is for you to decide. But either way, that is a good transition into some of the pros uh, for a 12-inch Newtonian. And the first is that, my God, this is a serious light bucket. And uh, aperture does matter in astronomy. Don't let anybody tell you differently. The 12-inch mirror, this is a 19% increase in the light gathering uh, surface when we compare it to my next largest telescope which is the C11 it gathers 125 percent more light than my C8 and 600 percent more light than my AT115 EDT uh, refractor so what does all this light do for us well it gives us much more signal which means that we will have stronger signal to noise ratio and more importantly perhaps we'll be able to see fainter targets targets that cannot be seen in smaller aperture telescopes and I must tell you that this is a real phenomenon and it is amazing number two this is a very fast telescope it's an astrograph it has a f4 focal ratio which is a very very steep light cone which concentrates all that gathered light in to a smaller area on the focal plane when compared to higher focal ratios which have more shallow light cones. So the result is much faster imaging times. An hour of data captured with the F4 newt would require two and a half hours with the C8 including the F6.3 reducer. Now the other thing that I think is great about an uh, 12 inch f4 Newtonian is that you get excellent resolution at a very manageable focal length this is 1200 millimeters in focal length and that happens to be ideal for lots of DSOs including galaxies planetary nebula um, nebulous regions globular clusters etc you name it there are so many great objects to image at 1200 millimeters and this happens to pair really well with 3.8 micron cameras like the ASI 1600 and the 2600 mm pro so fourth really cool pro they're affordable uh, new this thing sold for about a thousand bucks I noticed that you can't buy these GSO TPO models anymore but uh, uh, when they were selling a thousand bucks is a great bargain and occasionally they do show up in the classifieds in, in uh, cloudy nights for eight hundred dollars or so and I think it's a terrific bar bargain at the moment I think that there's a quattro 12 inch uh, a Newtonian astrograph out there that's a uh, similar uh, focal ratio and I think it's selling for around two thousand bucks even then it's the best aperture to cost ratio of any telescope design on the market today add to that that these Newtonians are, are very much um, do-it-yourself instruments yeah take a look at my video series on this topic where you know I cover uh, a total restoration of this of this 12 inch Newtonian and uh, you know it's really easy to do really easy to trick out your rig fifth thing and probably for me you know the proof is always in the pudding um, th this thing produces awesome images I mean I was just looking to just make sure everything was working with my mount that it was going to have no problem slewing and tracking and it was guiding well etc uh, I caught this image of Bode's galaxy completely shot in uh, IR filter um, 
I don't I don't remember maybe an hour's worth of data maybe less than that it's just I was amazed at how well this stacked up and uh, I did very little processing on this I mean I think I just did your your typical uh, noise reduction blur reduction after the stack and um, I didn't I didn't even use calibration frames I think so this is a, a remarkable grab um, and I, I can't wait to do more with it. Take a look at this one. This is the Wizard Nebula. And, you know, this is funny. This was with narrow bands. I did HA, um, uh, sulfur, and oxygen. And I'm using the cheapest filters you can find in this case with one of the cheapest cameras. So this is ZWO's filters uh, with the ZWO 1600 mm Pro. Um, this thing guided under under a half an arc second in total RMS while guiding. This is an hour worth of data on each channel. And I did your classic, I, I didn't even have calibration frames for this. And that's the honest truth. I just did a quick, um, I just quickly, you know, converted, registered, stacked, um, did a pixel math uh, combine um, through some noise reduction, some blur reduction. I did a little bit of adjustment to contrast on it. Uh, I'm sorry, to saturation. And I just wanted to see what the image looked like. And I <laughs> have to tell you, you know, I compared this to a 16 inch, a, a grab that was done with a 16 inch uh, Newtonian. And of course, the 16 inch Newtonian did a much better job. Uh, but I'll tell you, they're pretty close. And this was a throwaway session. So I'm going to capture, I'm going to try and capture 10 phenomenal images with this Newtonian and of course there's going to be a follow-up video on each and every one of those images so I hope you subscribe go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you can catch these videos as soon as they drop and with that I will see you all in the next video